Welcome you all to CHD 206 Chapter 9, Preparing the Environment. A nurturing, safe, and trusting environment is critical for children's social, emotional, physical, and cognitive development. Children need space to build, move, sort, create, pretend, spread out, work, and interact with their friends. They need diverse materials and sufficient quantities to keep them actively involved. The choices children make and the way they carry out their choices is also affected by the space. So join me as we learn all about Chapter 9, Preparing the Environment. Our first objective is going to be to explain the value of planned space. The early years are crucial for the cognitive development of children. It is essential to have sufficient floor space for children to move around, furniture and other equipment. In Alabama, we follow DHR's minimum standards for daycare and nighttime centers, which states that there shall be at least 32 square feet of indoor activity space for each child, and there shall be at least 60 square feet of outdoor play area for each child. These figures do not include kitchens, closets, bathrooms, staff areas, or entryways. Um, so if you take a look on the screen just real quick, um, if you'll hover over this picture uh, while you're, um, you'll be able to um, possibly click on it and you see it takes you to um, the DHR minimum standards. Um, I'm going to put this link in the bottom of the video just so you can see, um, so you'll have access to it, okay? And then also this pre-K tour classroom, same way. Um, if you, I'll put the link into the uh, video, bottom of the video as well. And you'll be able to actually click on that link and you can tour some classrooms so that you can see some photos of different centers. So I think it'd be very um, helpful to you to look at those things um, after we go through the video, okay? Before arranging a classroom, you also need to review the developmental objectives of your program. Uh, make sure you know the developmental needs of the age of the child or the children uh, that it's being designed for. And also check out DHR's minimum standards for daycare and nighttime centers for guidance of what is mandatory to a specific classroom. An attractive, well-arranged classroom is welcoming and visually pleasing. It conveys a sense of order and encourages children to use materials and do things for themselves. It respects the children's curiosity and nurtures the desire for exploring while molding their behavior. Boundaries found in these types of classrooms make children more responsible and they know where to find the materials and where to return them when they're finished with them. Safety is an important concern in planning space. When children feel safe, they feel free to learn. Open spaces must be provided so adults can supervise the entire room. The ratio of caregivers also affects safety. The specifics for Alabama can be found in the DHR minimum standards for daytime and nighttime centers. However, programs might choose to go above and beyond these minimum standards. Objective two, we'll talk about summarizing the factors that affect the organization of space in a center. The physical space of a center may be divided into seven main areas. The basic areas include the entrance, director's office, isolation area, kitchen, staff room, bathrooms, and classrooms. An organized classroom can inspire children to take part in the activities of the day. The space should be arranged to define the scope and limits of activities. Space will also affect the children's use of and care for the materials. Therefore, the space must provide for pro proper learning experiences. When planning classroom space, many factors should be considered. They include licensing requirements, program goals, group size, scale, and traffic patterns. These will greatly affect how the classroom is organized. 
all states have their own licensing requirements and you will need to know our state requirements established by Alabama DHR before you begin planning. Some common requirements often include fire extinguishers, exits must be clear, entrance doors must open to the outside, and early childhood classrooms should be on the ground floor close to an exit. Program goals should be based on the children's abilities, age, and skills. The environment and planned activities should stimulate growth and development. Program goals should also reflect state licensing requirements. Group size is an important factor to consider when arranging space. I mentioned earlier that there are guidelines for minimum square footage and adult to child ratio, but the types of activities will also impact your planned space. The more children there are in the group, the more empty space is needed. A good rule of thumb is to plan open space for one third to one half of your entire classroom. The classroom environment must be scaled to the size of its occupants. Child size furniture should be purchased and bulletin boards, interactive whiteboards, toilets, water fountains, sinks, pictures, and other items should all be at the child's level. Traffic patterns are the way children move between classroom areas. Furniture should be arranged to create useful traffic patterns. Program activities will affect Pat traffic patterns as well. Objective three, we're going to describe planning activity areas. Classroom arrangements, we, you will arrange your classroom according to activity areas so that they provide an ideal environment for active learning. Each activity area should clearly convey to the children what those choices are. Each activity area is also a space of its own and furniture can be used to create those boundaries. These, er these areas should be arranged by function, keeping active and quiet areas away from each other, as well as wet and dry activity areas apart. Remember that rather than being static, room arrangements must be flexible. Rearranging the classroom areas is, is necessary when the children's interests or developmental needs change. These can be accomplished by switching out the materials in the activity area or by using themes in your classroom. Children require an introduction to an activity area in a classroom. They need to learn what materials are in each area and what activities can take place there. They also need to learn safety rules, cleanup and routine for using and replacing materials. Careful arrangement of materials will enable the children to help maintain the learning environment. Some common activity areas you may find in an early childhood classroom include block building, dramatic play, sensory, math, library, music, science, technology, private space for sleeping and eating. Developmentally appropriate programs value outdoor as well as indoor space. Many classrooms do not have the proper amount of space for large muscle activities and other activities that can take place outdoors during pleasant weather. The outdoor playground can fill these needs. So let's review what we've learned. Properly organized space is key to promoting children's learning and influences the quality of learning. It provides children with the option of working alone or cooperatively. It defines expected behavior for children. Properly organized space frees children to play without interruption and provides children with choices. Space should also reflect children's developmental needs, interests, and experiences, as well as your program goals. In such space, children are more relaxed and positive. As a direct result, teachers can spend more time nurturing and less time redirecting children's behaviors. That wraps us up for chapter one. You can learn more about this topic by reviewing the resources posted in your course. And as always, if you have any questions, please contact me. Thanks again for joining me as we learned all about preparing the environment.